Welcome to our online service for Central Christian Church in Janesville. Uh, my name is Kellen Anderson. I'm the campus pastor here. And I uh, just want to say thank you for coming and joining us. Wherever you're, you're coming from, if maybe you live miles and hours away, uh, or maybe you're right here in Janesville uh, and you're watching because maybe it's cold outside or whatever, but we, we thank you for being with us. And we hope that this is a time where you can just enter into a moment of letting uh, God speak into your heart as we worship as we listen to the word spoken today, um, let's just pray and ask God to do something in our midst. Right now, God, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. We thank you for your grace and your love, your mercy that you give us through Jesus, your son. And God, right now, as we take a, uh, some time to worship you, we ask that you would uh, refresh our hearts and renew our hearts and challenge us in the ways that you want to challenge us today. We thank you for being in our midst wherever we're at. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. For I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I'm singing hallelujah. The Christ is risen from the grave. Singing hallelujah. The Christ is risen from the grave. 
from the grave. That's good.
church, let's hear it. Cause all my life you have been faithful. Oh, that is good. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made. Yes, I will see of the good. everybody, this is The Loop. I just want to let you know a few things that are going on at the Central Christian Church Janesville campus. Uh, one of the things that we've been doing uh, for a number of months here is we've been asking you to do an RSVP when you come to church on Sunday. And so if you have been to our in-person services, that's, that's been the practice. Starting last week, we, we've stopped doing the RSVP. And so if at any point you plan on coming to church on a Sunday morning, don't worry about having a pre-RSVP. So if you wake up Sunday morning, you're like, hey, I think I want to go to church. Uh, don't have to worry about getting online and doing that. So I just want to make sure that you all knew that. Um, I also want, to, I want you to be thinking Easter is coming around the corner and maybe that's going to be a time where you're, you can f feel a little bit more comfortable at that point to come back to in-person services if you haven't been or, or maybe it's a good time for you to invite somebody to church uh, who you've been thinking about inviting them for a long time. And I know it's kind of uh, still a weird thing to be inviting people to, uh, to places where there's a, people at. Um, but just be thinking about Easter. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a good time for you to get replugged back in uh, if you've been away from us for a while from in-person services. Uh, today, uh, Pastor David Clark, our lead pastor, is going to be uh, giving the sermon today. I'm, I'm excited to hear what he has to say to us. And so um, before that happens, at the end of the sermon, uh, we will take communion together. And so go ahead and grab something for that, whether it's uh, some juice or water or whatever it might be to drink and maybe a piece of bread or, or cracker or something like that um, to eat. Uh, but also I want to give you an opportunity as a part of our act of worship to be able to give back to God a little what he's given to us. And so you can go on to centraljanesville.com uh, and click on the online giving link there. Uh, or you can use our Give app. It's G-Y-V-E. You can get plugged into Central Christian Church uh, through the Give app and you can give that way as well. Um, just want to thank you again for being with us and excited to hear what, what uh, Pastor David has to say to us today. And so uh, this is The Loop. Now you're in it. You guys, I love you. I thank God for you. If you're joining us for the very first time, maybe this is as close as you've ever been to a church. Man, we are grateful that God has called you to be with us. In fact, here, right up front, here's today's number one truth. God is calling you. God is calling you to move. For, because when you stop moving forward, you start slipping backward. And that's true in every aspect of your life through your relationship with God. If uh, your marriage isn't moving forward, <laughs> then you're going to lose your love and feeling. No, your relationship is going to start going in the wrong direction. If your finances are stuck in neutral, not moving forward, you're going to suffer slippage. Uh, your finances are going to go on a downhill decline. Um, if you're not moving forward, into emotional and mental health, taking initiative to grow emotionally and mentally, you're going to suffer slippage. And your emotions. 
and the way you think. You're going to slip into fear, slip into anxiety, slip into dark despair. So this is our, our first big question. Where are you suffering slippage right now in your life? Do you feel it in your relationships? Do you, do you see it in your finances? Are you suffering slippage um, emotionally? Uh, well, here's today's truth, number two. When you answer God's call to move, He makes movement in all areas of your life. God is calling you to move forward in the right direction, in a loving direction, in your relationships, in your friendships, in your parenting, in your marriage. And when you move forward in response to his call, he moves you forward in all areas of your life. In fact, um, you begin to experience what the psalmist sang, my cup overflows. God calls you to move. When you move in response to God's call, it has like this divine domino effect on your life. You move forward in all areas of your life. God is so good. He calls you move and he moves in every area of your life. And then it touches people in your life, your family, your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors. And the, the power of it moves from their lives into the people within their field of influence. I mean, it goes beyond. To people you don't even know, it goes beyond what you might ever imagine. It overflows. You overflow with joy. You overflow with God's love. You overflow with hope and peace. And so we're launching today a new teaching series called Move, The Secret to an Overflowing Life. You see, God is calling. And when we refuse or resist movement, we, we slip away from God. We slip away from His love in our relationships. We we find his peace, his joy, his hope slipping away from our lives. And so, for the next several weeks, uh, we're going to be in this series, and in episode after episode, we'll focus on a man named Abram. He's later called Abraham. Don't let that mess you up. Abram means father of many. Um, Abraham means father of many nations. So basically, Abram means daddy, and Abraham means big daddy. That's who we're going to talk about. And in every episode, we'll see God call Abram. And God respond, Abram respond to the call, and God bless immeasurably, unbelievably, Abram on the basis of his move. Move, and God blesses. Here's the very first promise. God makes to Abram, if he, will rem if he will move in response to God's call, I will bless you, God says, and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. You see, that's that divine domino effect. God calls, we move, God blesses, and that blessing moves into the lives of other people and from their lives into the lives of others. And so, um, I mean, this had to have staggered Abram. I mean, he's just an ordinary guy. He's 75 years old. He's just going through an ordinary day. I mean, he's got his ups, his downs, his pains, his joys. But in the midst of his day, the God of the universe stops him dead in his tracks and blows him away by saying, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you famous. And I'm going to bless you so much you'll become a blessing to other people. And I, I, I believe Abram is just awestruck. Uh, he can hardly get out the words, God, I, I don't know what to say. I, I'm truly grateful that, that you're going to make this happen in my life. Um, is there anything I can do for you? And God says, yes, I need you to move. Here's the scripture. 
The Lord said to Abram, move. Now the Hebrew word is yalak. And th- this is significant. Remember this word, yalak. Move, yalak, away from your native country, your relatives, and your father, and to the land that I will show you. You can't um, get into the blessing of God. You can't get into the overflowing life by playing it safe. I mean, you have to take the risk of trusting God completely. Let me show you. You move into the overflowing life by moving out of your comfort zone. Your comfort zone is not a place of safety and security. Your comfort zone is where you go to die. Your comfort zone is your quicksand. You have to trust God enough to make the move out of your comfort zone. He calls on the basis of his call in your marriage, in your finances, in your emotions, in your relationships. You say yes to God because God always has a next best step for you to take in your relationship with him. God always has a next best stake for you, step for you to take in your marriage, in your parenting, in your emotional and mental health. And he calls you to take that step. And when you say yes and you move in the direction that he's calling you, that's when the overflowing blessings come. So let me show you. This is the first move you make. The first move into the overflowing life is to answer God's call. And God's call is not like a one and done. Uh, He is continually calling us to take that next best step. Uh, So for some of you, within the next 20 minutes, our good God will call you to surrender your life fully to Jesus. In fact, you, you cannot be a Christian a Christ follower without answering the call of God on your life. For for some of you, right now God is calling you to experience Jesus fully in his death, burial, and resurrection through baptism. You are being called to the experience of baptism. For, for, For others of you, now within the sound of my voice online, God is calling you to begin to worship in person in our public services. I mean, we've been doing this for six months now without a problem, without a struggle. Our church is safer than Walmart or wherever you go for groceries or essentials. And I believe God is calling you right now. It's time. This is my call on your life. Do public worship. Go to Central Christian on the weekend and join the public services. That's a part of God's call on your life. Somebody within the sound of my voice, that's true for you. Others, maybe God is calling you to to be a difference maker, to serve him by serving other people some way. But God is putting a call on your life. When you say yes, when you move in response to his call, that's when you begin to enter and experience the overflowing life. As I mentioned earlier, answering God's call, it's an absolute necessity. Otherwise, you slip away from him. You slip away from his love. You slip away from his power to make a difference in your life. You slip away from his capacity to change you and to make a difference for others through you. Now, um, if you are brand new to this Christian faith thing, this relationship with God thing, I've got good news for you. Because Abram, he was clueless about God. Um, He was a newbie when it came to following God, a rookie, a a first-timer. Or if you're in the position where you want to restart, you need to restart your spiritual life and get back in relationship with God, this is the study for you. Because God's call on your life is all about His grace. Now, God's grace is God giving you good gifts that you don't deserve. That's what happened to Abram. God called Abram not because Abram was such a good guy. Abram was not a good guy. He was a bad guy. He he had character flaws. He, He did some of the worst things possible to those he loved the most. I suppose as we all have. But it was God's goodness. 
It was out of God's goodness that that call was issued to Abram. You see, it's not that Abram was qualified to receive God's call. It was that God's call qualified Abram. Same is true for us. God qualifies us when we say yes to his call. When we say yes to his call. In our relationships, he he qualifies us. He gives us a quality of love that we would never have otherwise. It's not because we're so good. It's because he's so good that he brings a new quality of love to our relationships. Um, We don't wait to be generous till we feel like we're qualified to be generous. No, we answer the call of God and then God qualifies us with the resources out of which to to offer our generosity to his church and, and to the Lord. God qualifies us when we move in response to his call. When we move in response to his call. He's calling you right now. Calling you to take a next step in your relationships. Calling you to take a next step in your generosity. Calling you to take a next step in worshiping him and serving him. So here's big question number two. How do I know when God is calling me? Well, the first thing that you'll feel, the first thing that you'll understand, the first whisper that will come over your soul is that God calls you to move and to move away from the sin and disobedience in your life. Everybody in Abram's family, they had turned their backs on God. They they had become moon worshipers. They had made the moon their God. They prayed to the moon. They worshiped uh, the moon. In fact, the first, uh, where we are right now is in chapter 12 of Genesis. The first 11 chapters of Genesis is a long record of every single person on the planet, all humanity, turning their backs on God and caught up, seduced into this downward death spiral into self-destruction. And so God calls He calls us first. His call in our life first is to turn away from the sin and and destructive behaviors in our life. He's calling you. He's calling us as a church. Here's how God calls. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. God calls us away. God, the, the call of God, let's say the call for you to follow Jesus, to surrender to him. In order to follow after Jesus, you must go move away from some behavior, maybe some toxic relationship. But God is calling you away from the sin. That's where it begins, the self-destructive behavior in your life. God calls us to move into overflowing God calls us to move into a life overflowing with blessing. This is the favor of God. This is the goodness of God falling on every aspect of our life. And the way he promised it to Abram is the way he promises it to us. Here's how he said it to Abram. God says, if you move, you lock, I will cause you to become the father of a great nation and I will bless you and make your your name famous, and you will be a blessing to many others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. The entire world will be blessed because of you. I'm going to work through this text backwards, and you probably picked up on it. Five times there was some form of the word blessed. Blessing, blessed, blessed, blessed. Five times. Now in the Bible, the number five is the number of grace. So this shows us, we, it's not about our goodness. We don't have to be good enough to be blessed by God. We just have to answer his call and move in, re, in response to his call. We take that next step of love in our marriage. We take that next step of love in our generosity. We take that next step in worshiping God and serving God. And on the basis of that next step, our move God blesses, 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 blesses us. Um, 
Now, there's something more profound at work here that just um, shook Abram to the core of his being. Now, let me take you back to the very beginning of this call. Um, if you move, God promises to Abram, I will cause you to become the father. This is huge. The father of a great nation. Well, before Abram could become the father of a, any kind of nation, he would have to be the father of at least one son. And that wasn't happening for Abram. He was out of luck when it came to having children. And so this was like the promise for his wildest dream to come true. This was, this was so unbelievable because here's the backstory, the sad backstory on Abram's story. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, but Sarai was unable to become pregnant. She had no children. There was something wrecked in her womb. It was impossible for her to get pregnant, let alone give birth. But, but God makes this promise to Abram. I will satisfy the desire of your heart. You move. I'm calling you now to move. And if you move, I will make your wildest dreams come true. Not only will you be the father of a great nation, but it will begin by you being the father of a son. So what does Abram do? Check it out. So Abram moved. There's that Hebrew word again. The one God used. Abram does exact, makes the exact move that God called him to do. So Abram moved, Yalak, as the Lord had instructed him. And on the basis of that move, God does the unparalleled, the uh, uh, impossible, the unprecedented, the unbelievable. God touches Sarai's womb. She conceives. She goes through nine months of pregnancy and she gives birth to a son they call Isaac. Now Isaac, he becomes the joy of their life. But for me and you, as we read this text in the very first book of the Bible, their son is really pointing to the ultimate son, Jesus, the son of the living God. In fact, this whole story is meant to point us to Jesus, for just as Abram was called to move away from his father, the moon worshiper, move away from his father, Jesus is called to move away from his father in heaven, to move to earth, move away from his father, the creator of the moon, the creator of the sun and stars, the creator of the entire cosmos. Jesus is, is called to move. And he says yes. He obeys God's call to move. And maybe it went something like this. God speaking says, Son, Jesus, I want you to move. I want you to, you luck. I want you to move out of your majesty and splendor here in heaven. I want you to move to earth through human birth. I want you to move through life fully human, fully God, all at the same time for 33 years. I want you to move through life and, and, and tenaciously battle your way through every test, every trial, every temptation until you have lived an absolutely sinless life. Then I want you to, to move to the cross. I want you to take that pure, innocent life. You knew no sin, you do no sin, but you take that pure, innocent life and willingly lay it down on the cross to pay for the sins of every person on the planet. I want you to move away from heaven. I want you to move to earth. I want you to make, I want you to move to making the greatest sacrifice, being made the sin of people that people might be made right with me, son. I, I want you to move on, on the cross to absorb all my wrath, all my judgment, all my condemnation, do people for their sin. I want you to take it all on yourself. 
I want you to move to the cross to bear all the punishment due people for their sin. I want you to move to the cross uh, to bear all the consequence of people's sins. I want you to die for the sins of people. When you move to the cross, nails will be driven through your hands and feet. And you will agonize in anguish until you are fully physically dead. And then your limp, lifeless body will be removed and laid in a stone-cold tomb. And then, because you made every move I called you to make, I will raise you from the dead, victorious over hell, death, and the grave. And I will give you super abundant, incomparably great power. And that super abundant, incomparably great power, you may offer to anyone you please who moves when I call them. Who moves into the overflowing life. And so the greatest history changing most pivotal moment ever was when Jesus moved in response to God's call. And the blessings of God fell on us through Jesus. It was a divine domino effect as the blessings of Jesus fall on us and so here's my final big question right now in your life where is God calling you to move what next best step is he calling you to take in your marriage in your parenting what next best step is he calling you to take emotionally and mentally to to, to grow and mature from the inside out to grow into peace, to grow into joy, to grow into hope. What next best step is God calling you to take in your generosity? For God so loved the world that he gave. So what next best, next best step is he calling you to make in your likeness to him? Is he calling you to give your life to Christ? Is he calling you to experience Jesus fully in his death, of burial, and resurrection through baptism? Is he calling you back to public worship to join us on the weekend in person? Is he calling you to serve? I'd like to pray with you about that right now. If you'd bow with me, please. Our Father God, great God of even greater blessing, that you would be willing to call us into what is better and best for our lives, into greater joy, into greater peace, into greater hope, into greater, oh my gosh, into greater love. Father, you are something else. Please help us to say yes to your call, to turn away from our sin, to turn from our wicked ways, to humble ourselves and seek your face and to pray and to surrender to you, Lord. We know that you'll forgive. We know that you'll heal. We know that you hear our prayers. And so for those, um, Lord God, that need to surrender to Jesus right now, in accordance to your move in their life, accept their surrender, Lord. Make them your child. For those that you're calling to be baptized, Lord, provoke in their heart to go online, Set the date, make the arrangements, and experience you fully, Jesus, in baptism. And for those that you're calling, it's time to come back to public worship. Make that plain, unmistakable, Lord. Comfort them. Thank you, Lord, that you would be willing to call us and to qualify us. We receive your blessings now. In the name of Jesus, amen. I love you. I thank God for you. I'm anxious to go through this series and keep on the move in response to the call of God. We're going to move into a time of communion together. And so uh, grab what you need for communion. uh, And we're going to be eating and drinking here in just a minute. Uh, But I want to read from 1 Corinthians 11. It says, 
The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Why don't we take a moment and just remember what Jesus did on the cross for us uh, as we pray together. Lord, we thank you so much for your sacrifice for us on the cross. We thank you for giving up your body and giving up your blood for the forgiveness of our sins. You took your sin upon yourself, our sin upon yourself, and you, you gave us your righteousness. God, we thank you for that. We ask that you would glorify yourself in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. My prayer for all of us this morning is that we ask and allow God to blow our minds with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of who He is, who He has always been, and who He always will be.
don't scare you You're bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought And I stop all negotiations With my God of all creation You're bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought God is so much bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought God is so much bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought you were, yeah Amen, praise the Lord Thank you again for joining us, everybody, for our online service today uh, glad that you were able to be with us and hope that you guys are doing well. Hope that you're staying healthy and, and not just on the physical side, but emotionally, spiritually, or relationally, that in every way uh, that God is blessing you. And so I just want to pray a, a quick prayer of blessing as we let you go today. Um, so let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for everybody listening to this service today, taking part uh, in, in the church, whether it's in a building uh, that we call a church or whether it's in our homes or maybe we're listening to this in our car or as we're out for a walk. God, whatever it is, wherever it is that we are meeting with you right now, we thank you that you choose to meet with us. God, throughout this week, I pray blessings over each and every one of us, uh, that you will guide our lives in the spiritual, in the relational, in the financial, uh, in, in the physical, in every way, God, minister to us. And God, help us to be a blessing to the people around us this week, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, everybody. Hope you guys have a great week. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks.